Hello the amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new Doctor Who ranking video and this is episode 2 in my series of ranking every single story from every actor that has played the Doctor in their era. So for this episode as you can tell it is ranking every Patrick Trouton story I have seen so far. Now, the second Doctor, when I was writing all of these stories down and how I rank them, I realised there's only two stories out of 21 I haven't actually experienced properly, which is, of course, the Highlanders and, of course, the Space Pirates. So, out of Troughton's whole era, I've experienced 19 out of 21 of his stories and... I didn't even realise that. I thought I had more stories to experience from the second Doctor. But lately, kind of adding it up, and I was like, hang on a bit, I swear there was more I haven't seen. So anyway, as I was going it through, and I'm like, oh yeah, the animations have really... So the animations have really helped me get into the Troughton era so much, and for me to have some of his stories, only seen like a handful of them, to actually watch 19 out of 21, and this is absolutely amazing stuff. And... To actually have 19 stories of his complete with, with animation or how I experienced it, like with Taylor Snap reconstructions and stuff. So yeah, let's dive into how I rank every single Patrick Troughton story I have seen. So, number 19, Fury from the Deep. Fury from the Deep, this is definitely one of the weak Troughton stories. I understand the animation doesn't really help, but after listening to the audio on this from this story because my friend let me the cd of the audio and i'm like thinking to myself the audio sounds so much better than what we actually see in the in the animation because the animation is it's just like some scenes are like too big and it doesn't really feel like a proper 60 seconds the 60 seconds were really like so crammed in and stuff and yeah the the animation of fear from the deep really doesn't help the story but I am grateful we have got it animated. I'm, I, I do have a few issues with the animation, but I'm actually grateful we've actually got it animated and it's in your DVD and Blu-ray shelves just so we can experience it more. Number 18, it is of course the Underwater Menace. Now, this story has been announced to be coming out in animation, so this story might boost up a lot in the list, but at the moment it is in 18th place because... Of the Teddy Snap reconstructions. They're just absolutely terrible. The two surviving episodes on the other hand. They're absolutely quite good. I do enjoy them. I mean nothing in the world can stop me now. Yeah I really do enjoy the Underwater Mist. For the actual surviving episodes. But the reason I've had to put this a bit lower. Is because of the Teddy Snap reconstructions. When this first came out in 2015. This was honestly. The first ever thing I experienced. Of Teddy Snap reconstruction. And. It's just absolutely terrible on the DVD. And I did recommend to my friend not to buy this. Because I just... It's to start a story. I don't really want him to buy it. And then watch episodes 2 and 3 existing. And then he's got a portal with the Toast Snap reconstructions from episode 1 and episode 2. And they're not great re reconstructions. So I'm sort of it. Number 17. The Croutons from season 6. The Croutons... It's not as bad people make it out to be. Not as bad, but I enjoy certain bits of it. I love the fact where we kind of see the Doctor set reset um set the has the um the emergency hostile action on the TARDIS where basically the Crutons go to destroy the TARDIS and it dematerializes for the very first time. So that's actually really really good cool to see. The Croutons design is absolutely amazing. I do like the Croutons. If these were going to return, I do want these designs to be updated, not have new effects. So yeah, number seventeen has got to be the Croutons. Number 16, yeah, this one, I'm going to say it's not a brilliant trout and story, but I'm grateful it, we kind of have parts of it existing and two episodes of it has been animated. It is the Ice Warriors. The introduction story to the Ice Warriors and what can I say about it? Is it great? For me to sit here and say what makes a great Ice Warrior story, that's later on in this list, by the way. But it's not really great. It is a good introduction story for him. But it's not a masterpiece. It's not a brilliant story. It's just a six part story. It's like you, know what? you have to be in a certain mood for this one. For me I have to be in a really bad mood. For me to go and watch the Ice Warriors. To kind of kind of get the bit of the Trollton experience going on in my mind and stuff. So yeah I'm sorry to say that. But the Ice Warriors is actually in 16th place. 
15th place, we have the inf the facial the faceless ones. Yeah, I really do enjoy this story more than the ice more than the ice warriors, but I have to admit the dominant. Um, sorry, where was I? Oh yeah, the faceless ones. It's the animation helps this exist, but even though we had episodes one of existing before it was basically been animated. I think episodes one and three exist for this episode. I'm not too sure. I need to rewatch it. I haven't rewatched it in a long time. I like the the airport setting in Gatwick Airport. I love the way how you kind of got a policeman screaming, like shouting at the TARDIS team, which is the Doctor, Jamie, Polly, and Ben. And he goes, "Hey, you!" And the Doctor goes, "Scatter!" And of course, the Doctor and Jamie are just so iconic. They're actually just like hiding with next to each other. And the Doctor goes, "Jamie," and they like to go there hiding. <laughs> I really do like that. And then. Polly later on comes running across and the doctor goes, Polly! Like that. And then he calls her over and then she tells him that she does see somebody die. Yeah, I really do enjoy this story. The the It's not a great one, but it's very average, the faceless ones. Number 14, it's got to be the Dominators. Yes, this is a five-part story, but the reason I've put this higher is just because Patrick Troughton saves this story for me. Troughton is the best thing about the story. I really do enjoy Troughton's performance in this story. The Dominators is kind of a hit and miss kind of story for most fans. For me, it's definitely a hit, hit and miss story. But I do watch this now and again when I'm in the mood for just for Troughton to be, you know, like Troughton. His facial expressions are amazing as the Doctor. And then, of course, you have to go, oh, my word. And I really do like Troughton as the Doctor. He's got to be my third favourite Doctor. He's always going to be my third favourite Doctor. And I really do like the Dominators because he just saves the Dominators from sucking. And that would have been down in 19th place. Number 13. Sorry, number 13. The Wheel in Space. Now, I experienced this on BritBox. And the reason I managed to experience this on BritBox is because they have the telesnap reconstructions for the missing episodes. So, it was the very first time I actually sat down and watched the story late last year. I've um, August, I watched the story and I did do my review on this through episodes one to five, and then I kind of stand all my reviews all together and then see what and say what I actually think of it. The Wheel in Space, I have to admit, I absolutely enjoyed the way the Doctor basically confronts the Simon and goes, I imagined you had orders to destroy me. You don't know how it was, you must be destroyed. Well, you better come in then. And the way he literally flicks the electric. The electric and the Simon literally just collapses. This is also the first story to inter like to introduce us to the Cyber Planet as well. And it sees the return of the Cybermats since the beginning story of Season 5, The Tomb of the Cybermen, which is much higher in this list. We're in space. It's a great introduction story to his next companion, a.k.a. Suri. The Cybermen are brilliant. Yeah, this story is just phenomenal and I do enjoy it. I want to pull it a bit higher, but I kind of want this story to be animated and then I can enjoy it a lot more because I really... I really just don't really like the, you know, the best, like the Tony Snap reconstructions, but the Wheel in Space is kind of okay. That, cause that was my 10th reconstruction story I actually watched of Doctor Who, the missing stories, and it just saves the reconstruction for me. I have to say, number 12 is the enemy of the world. Now, Charlton plays two versions. He plays the Doctor and, of course, the evil Salamander. And this story. It is cracking, it's brilliant, but the reason I've had to put this in number 12 is because there are so many other good episodes above this one, even though this is just brilliant. But Troughton has got so many iconic stories to me, and this one, yeah, I do enjoy it. I have for me, I do enjoy it, but for me to put this in 12th place, it's because there are another 11 great stories above this one. I'm sorry to say that, but there are just so many other Troughton stories I prefer to watch more than The Enemy of the World, even though Enemy of the World is just brilliant. The way it feels like a bit of a James Bond story, the Doctor's got to um, basically say, oh, you know, he's got to pretend to be Salamander. Salamander pretends to be the Doctor. The doc Salamander accidentally presses the, the takeoff button on the, tar to the, on the TARDIS, and because he leaves the door open, he gets flings into the time vortex. Yeah, I do enjoy this story. Number 11, The Abominable Snowman. Now, the Abominable Snowman, I had nothing about the story. I knew nothing about it until I got the Target Novel book. I bought the Target Novel book when the animation was released back in 2021 for the Doctor Who's anniversary, 48th anniversary, before, well, 58th anniversary, sorry. And then it came out in animation last year, 
And this story has grown on me. I Since I read the Target book and this story has physically grown on me. Um, thanks to the Target book and then when the animation came out. I just completely find love with the story. I love the robot Yetis, the great intelligence very first outing. The Doctor visiting Tibet because he wants to return something that he took in his first incarnation. Yeah, cracking story. Cracking story. And I do highly recommend The Abominable Snowman because I really do enjoy it. And it's a brilliant Yeti story. Into the number 10 spot. So, number 10. The War Games. Yeah, so we go to the Warlords. We've got the War Chief. Basically kidnapping people from Earth. But like the Romans or the World War I soldiers and some other soldiers. Why? So they can cry and create this evil master scheme together to rule the universe until the doctor basically interferes and he can't help it he has to interfere and he does try his best to help the people but this is way above the doctor's pay grade to be honest with you this is really really above the doctor's pay grade so the doctor has to call the time lords for help and of course, with the Time Lords literally getting the message from the Doctor, and they know he's there, they know the situation, and then of course, they decide to put him on trial for his crimes since his first incarnation, and they decide to exile him to Earth and force a regeneration on the second Doctor. Yeah, this story is one of the best stories. I do enjoy this one. Yeah, I would have put this a bit higher, but there's so many other iconic stories I just really enjoy more than this story, which I am so sorry for it's about, because the War Games, I do consider to be a bit of a masterpiece, but there's just so many other iconic stories above this one, I have to say. Number nine, we jump into the Mind Rubber. Yes, the Mind Rubber, it is a brilliant Troughton story. I love the fact we go into the land of fiction. So what happens is, Doctor has to basically take Demetrius the Tardis into nowhere, no scenario situation, because of them being on the volcano on the planet of a volcano and it's just erupting which is what we see at the end of the dominance and the, of course you've got the doctor saying to jamie oh don't worry don't worry don't worry jamie it will only destroy the the you know the island and the jamie goes we are on the island doctor and goes oh my word i would just absolutely love the way Trump goes oh my word and then of course you kind of got this secret intelligence thing trying to con con like talk to the doctor and the doctor goes i must concentrate i must concentrate and you got him holding on to the chair going, I must concentrate. And he's there. And you kind of got the Doctor, Jamie and Zoe in the situation going, Doctor, come here. Like this. And then Jamie sees Scotland. Zoe sees her home planet, you know. And then all of the situation where they thought they have escaped, the TARDIS blows up. And then you kind of got episodes two to, two to five. Just pure amazingness. And I do enjoy the mind robber. Number eight. Now this one, I have to admit, this one has grown on me quite a lot. And it is the Macro Terror. I physically enjoyed the Macro Terror. It's brilliant. It's atmosphere atmospheric. It's just cracking. If this story existing, I think I would still prefer the animation to this to, to, for the story because it makes the Macro so te uh, terrifying. It makes them uh, dominate in the way they re the way you kind of hear them like use the psychic powers to talk and basically control the the colony of the humans then the doctor and the tiger team do interfere you know this story is just a cracking one and when i was watching series three and we saw the macro i had no idea of the macro i had no idea they were, were part of a Troughton story way back in 2007 so growing up and keep watching gridlock and you're thinking oh the macro's quite good the macro's quite good and then you come out to like 2019 <coughs> sorry 2019 2018 time and this story has been announced to become in the full animation and release on Blu-ray. And you're kind of thinking to yourself, the Macro Terror. What? And then, then you go and buy it and then you realise it is a Troughton story. And it just blows your mind that the Macro go from these intelligent cr creature crabs to the more creatures that we have in Grillock. I probably would like to see the Macro return at some point. But I want them on the high level as they are in the Macro Terror. I have to say, number seven. The moon base. Yes, this is Troughton's third outing as the Doctor. Well, third or fourth outing as the Doctor. And it is the Simon's second appearance in the show. And this is set in the show's far future where you kind of got moon base control trying to help the Earth control its weather systems. And the Simon basically comes to his face, start kidnapping the crew. Polly sees one, she ends up going, ah! And the Simon literally just walks out. You've got Jamie going, it's the Pied Piper. You know, 
this story is just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. The Cybermen are brilliant. And the fact is, though, this is my third favourite Cybermen story from the Troughton era. I'm sorry to say that, but it's got to be my third favourite because it's just cracking. It's amazing. It's brilliant. I just honestly love the moon base. It's fantastic. Number six, the evil of the Daleks. Now, this story is just superb. David Whittaker is the best Doctor Who writer for the Daleks in any part of the 60s, 70s, 80s and the mid 2000s. David Whittaker gets the Daleks really, really well in his two Dalek outings, which is why I've had to put these in really, really high places. The evil of the Daleks shows how terrifying the Daleks can be, how intelligent they are, you know, they don't just go around exterminating people. And the way they actually go to Victoria, London and kidnap Vic, um, Victoria. And the fact is they would go to Scaro as well and we see the Dalek Emperor for the first time. This story is literally a 10 out of 10. It is a masterpiece to me. I just really enjoyed the evil of the Daleks. Number five, the power of the Daleks. Troughton's very first story since ever and this story was first animated back in 2016 and then of course it was re-released in 2020, so 2020, 2021 around that time. I prefer the special edition animation because the animation has been tweaked a little bit in there. I honestly have to admit, Power of the Daleks, it is a superb, brilliant story. The Daleks are just menacing on this base when you kind of have them be resurrected by Lesserton. And I mean, I think it's without, he's just a pathetic little mortal and he goes, What have I done? Yes, the Daleks, yes, it is, the Daleks, the Daleks. And the doctors are going, The Daleks are evil. The Daleks, you know, you can't trust them. And then, of course, when you have that iconic scene when the doctors are there walking into the Dalek capsule and he sees the three Daleks and he, he Come, Ben, Polly, come and meet the Daleks. The what? The Daleks. Dun, da, dun, dun, da, dun, dun, da, dun, 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 I really just love the story. And the way the Doctor defeats the Daleks on the planet Falcon is by using the static electricity, something that we knew since Hartnell's time as the Doctor from the very first story, aka the Doctor Who, the Daleks. I love how they bring that into it. David Whitaker just gets the Daleks spot on, like so, and I just really enjoy this one. Number four, the Tomb of the Cybermen. Tomb of the Cybermen, this one is the classic one. Now, this story was missing up until 1992 when it was released, found and released back to the BBC. And then it was re-released on VHS and two DVD versions of it have been released since on DVD. Tomb of the Cybermen, it is just another great story. I honestly just keep loving me watching the story. We have the Cybermen's introduction for the first time. We have the introduction to the Cyber Controller. We have, honestly, the best thing about the story the actual first appearance of a cyber controller and it's set on the planet terros is the way you have the iconic music with the simon glitch just climbing out of the tombs and you got that do 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 like that and you got the cyber controller just coming out going you for a long troll us you shall be like us. And then you got that, like that bee sting. And then it goes dun, 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 dun. I honestly have to admit, I really love the Tomb of the Simon. It's just a brilliant story. I flipping love it. It's cracking. It's amazing. And it's just superb. I honestly just love the Tomb of the Simon. Man. Number three, the Web of Fear. Now, the first time I watched this story was episode one, back in Doctor Lost in Time in 2003. This is absolutely a cracking Yeti story. It is the introduction story to Nicholas Courtney, a.k.a. Alistair Gordon Lethbridge-Stewart. Not to Unit, that Unit's later on. <clears throat> this is the Yeti's second appearance in the show. And they're more terrifying than they were in The Abominable Snowman. Which is why I had to put this so much higher than The Abominable Snowman. Because this is just absolutely bit That iconic scene where you kind of got them running around 60s London. And you see a Yeti just coming up to a go. Like that, and you kind of got the brick of the go, you know, trying to shoot them, and they fire a bazooka into one of them, and they just carry on coming at them. I really love this story. The Web of Fear, flat out amazing. I just really love the Web of Fear. Number two, The Invasion. I flipping love The Invasion. It is a fantastic story for the second Doctor. 
The Cybermen are just superb in this story. They are fantastic. They are brilliant. Honestly, this is the best Troughton story for me of the Cybermen. The way the Cyber Planet is there talking to Mr. Fawn and he's there, they're coming up with this plan for the invasion. And then when you get to episodes uh, four, five, six, and seven, and the Cybermen are just there rolling through the streets of London and you kind of got that sound, that dramatic sound, and you see the Cybermen just coming up from the from the sewers and they're literally just popping out. And this story introduces us to Unit. And of course, Brickadier Alistair Gordelipper Stewart is actually in the story and he's actually a colonel. So he goes to a colonel and then he becomes a Brickadier later on in the Pertwee era. I have to admit, this story is just absolutely amazing. It's brilliant. And this is my favourite outing for Unit. It is my favourite outing of the Cybermen. And this story introduces us to a classic Unit man, aka Mr. Sergeant Benton, who is my favourite unit member of the Pertwee era. And this is his first introductory story as well. And this is just superb all the way through. And number one. Number one, number one, number one, number one, number one. Number one of, of this list has got to be The Seeds of Death. This story is just absolutely perfect. We have Team Matter. We have Ice Warriors. We have the introduction story to the Ice Lords. The rulers of the Ice Warriors. Until we get to 2017 for the, Empre for the Empress. The Queen of Mars. The Queen of the Ice Warriors. This story is just pure amazingness and iconic. When you kind of got like this... Bubble, bu bubble bath flow, like covering up the screen and stuff because it's supposed to be this deadly sea pods and they're breaking through and the doctor's just uh, trying to hold his mouth and you've got to, they're trying to think it's absolutely like hot gas and stuff and he's like going, oh my god, Jamie, so away, like that. <laughs> it's really brilliant. And it has that other iconic scene when you kind of got this epic corridor run and the doctor is just there uh, running through with Jamie and then they literally stop, tap each other, and he goes, what is it? It's an ice warrior. It's an ice warrior, like that. And then they literally go running around the ice warrior, and the doctor's there running, and he comes across an ice warrior, and goes, oh, my word, like that. And he literally goes back running. And you come up to these, like, mirrors, and he's like, they're going, like that. And he just carries on running. I really love this story. Troughton has got to be the third best doctor for me. It's honestly superb. I do enjoy everything of his era. So that is me ranking all of his stories I have seen. Apart from the Space Pirates and the Highlands, because they are the only two Trouton stories I haven't seen. I know nothing about them apart from episode two of the Space Pirates, which is very, very confusing if you just watch episode two, because you need to watch episode one of it, and it just really gets me confused. So I've been waiting for that one. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of the 19 surviving, of the 19 stories that we can actually experience now through animation or original or tiny snap reconstructions let me know in the comments please do like subscribe and share which is your favorite trout and story and thank you for watching this amazing video and i hope you all have a fantastic day tomorrow you all are amazing and subscribers thank you